Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here. In, in this video, we will be talking about the low density lipoprotein metabolism, that means LDL metabolism. In our previous videos, we have discussed about the chylomicron metabolism and uh, VLDL metabolism. And what is the speciality of this LDL? LDL, so chylomicron and VLDL both are concerned with the transportation of triglycerides. Okay, uh, that is a different aspect like exogenous or endogenous uh, triglycerides. And here, in LDL metabolism, we'll be talking about how cholesterol, that means endogenously produced cholesterol, how it is transporting to other parts of the body, right? So, we have already seen the structural aspects of LDL in the introductory video of classification of lipoproteins and their characteristics. So, I'm not going in detail. So, just a brief uh, introduction here, I'll be giving. So, low density lipoproteins transports cholesterol from liver to peripheral tissues. Okay, uh, the only apoprotein present in LDL is ApoB100 because this LDL is produced in the liver. So that's why the protein mainly that produced in the liver that is ApoB100. And uh, remember, ApoB100 is also part of one more lipoprotein that is VLDL, which is also produced in the liver. So most of the LDL particles are derived from VLDL. Okay, and the half life of LDL in blood is about two days. Okay. Once it uh, started from the liver, it reaches to different parts of the body and delivering its cholesterol content. Okay, it will take maximum two days. Right, you see the structure of uh, LDL, FOB100 is there. Okay, and it is also made up of phospholipid, outer layer, triglycerides is there and cholesterol is there. So, it is mainly concerned for cholesterol transportation. So, coming to the metabolism part. So, this metabolism of LDL is complicated uh, compared to the other uh, lipoproteins okay so how why because it need a special ligand binding sites over the uh, target tissues okay what are the ligand uh, binding sites and what are the things will be involved in this we'll discuss the ldl is taken up by peripheral tissues by receptor mediated endocytosis remember this is a lipoprotein which use the pathway endocytosis and ldl receptors are present on all cells but most abundant in hepatic cells LDL receptors are located in specialized regions called clathrin coated pits. Okay, so LDL receptors are located in a specialized region called clathrin coated pits, and binding of LDL to the receptor is by ApoB100. Okay, binding of LDL to the receptor here, the receptor activity is uh, taken over by ApoB100, but in case of chylomicron, that activity taken over by ApoE. When the ApoB100 binds to ApoB100 receptor, the receptor LDL complex is internalized by endocytosis. So, the moment when it uh, bind on the receptor site, okay, that clathrin coated pit, okay, it uh, the target tissue will take up the LDL by the process called endocytosis. The endosome, now once this uh, LDL inside, so okay, with the formation of endosome, okay, the endosome vesicle thus formed fuses with lysosomes, okay, you know, inside the cell there are so many subcellular organelles, so one of the subcellular organelles is lysosome. And LDL particle along with apoprotein and cholesterol is hydrolyzed to form free cholesterol. Okay, here the LDL particle along with uh, apoproteins and uh, cholesterol esters, okay, that are supposed to be hydrolyzed to form free cholesterol. Because cholesterol ester is not useful for making up so many compounds, there should be availability of free cholesterol. That is the reason the hydrolysis of cholesterol esters to free cholesterol and if you break the cholesterol ester you will get free cholesterol and free fatty acid. The free receptors can now return to the membrane surface to bind further LDL molecules. So once the once dumping all the cholesterol ester content okay whatever present in LDL, LDL again weighs back to the surface of the cell membrane of the target tissue. Okay the free cholesterol is either incorporated into plasma membrane or esterified by ACAT. Okay you remember the enzyme ACAT okay the esterification okay here acyl coa acyl transferase here acat okay which again re-esterifies the cholesterol okay the excess cholesterol tends to be deposited within the arteries leading to atherosclerosis okay that's why free cholesterol is always dangerous to be left over in the middle of the transportation now coming to the functions of ldl so about 75 percent of plasma cholesterol is incorporated into ldl particles okay and LDL transports cholesterol from liver to peripheral tissues. The cholesterol thus liberated in the cells has three major fates. It is used for synthesis of other steroids like steroid hormones. Cholesterol may be incorporated into the membranes. Cholesterol may be esterified to what to say. I mean like uh, unsaturated fatty acids. Okay. 
एंड बाय एसाइल कोलेस्ट्रॉल एसाइल ट्रांसफरेज ए के एट स्टैंड्स पर एसाइल कोलेस्ट्रॉल एसाइल ट्रांसफरेज फॉर स्टोरेज ओके एंड फॉर स्टोरेज प्री कोलेस्ट्रॉल इज नॉट सुटेबल ओनली एस्टर फॉर्म फॉर दिस एस्टरिफिकेशन वी रिक्वायर द एंजाइम ए कैट ओके द सेलुलर कंटेंट ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल रेगुलेट्स फर्दर एंडोजिनस सेल्स ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल बाय रेगुलेटिंग एचएमजी कोई रिडक्टेज यू सी फॉर द मोमेंट द कोलेस्ट्रॉल एंटर इनसाइड द सेल ओके द सेल विल सेंस whether the cell has to produce cholesterol or not okay by the way like uh, by genetic regulation it regulates the cholesterol production so you see here overall uh, diagrammatic representation here so low density lipoprotein with cholesterol apo b100 is there so they are like clathrin coated pits in the target tissues okay and by the process of endocytosis they will go inside the cytosol okay and this is clathrin coated vesicle okay inside cholesterol is there okay and when it reaches to the lysosomes there is a enzyme okay lysosomal acyl l cat that means uh, the enzyme is also there okay and a cat is also there two enzymes okay so it will release the cholesterol to inside the cell and now this low density lipoprotein will be digested okay once it is coated vesicle this coated vesicle once the lipo ldl is delivered inside this clathrin coated pits again removed as a recycling vesicle it will go to the surface to grab one more ldl okay and the cholesterol will be deposited as cholesterol esters and maybe making of steroid hormones or vitamin d or making of cell membrane so all these functions are available for cholesterol and ldl and clinical applications what are the clinical applications uh, in relation to the ldl low density lipoprotein ldl concentration in blood has positive correlation with incidence of cardiovascular diseases okay a fraction of cholesterol is taken up by the macrophages increase levels of ldl or oxidation of ldl increases uptake of cholesterol by macrophages ldl infiltrates to arterial walls and are taken up by macrophages this is starting event of atherosclerosis leading to myocardial infarction because on the way when there is incomplete endocytosis process what happen ldl will be accumulated on the above the cell membrane okay and macrophages will come into whatever is there in the circulation will take up the ldl and they'll start reacting with the cholesterol present inside and they form foam cells and they cause block in the arteries so when macrophages are filled with cholesterol they form foam cells okay and they get deposited on the subendothelial space and leads to formation of atheromatous plaque this results in increase the chance of thrombosis and coronary artery diseases okay this can happen anywhere in the arteries okay not only in the heart okay so if it is happening in the heart it has got some serious condition like atherosclerosis myocardial infarction and it causes cardiac necrosis since ldl cholesterol is thus deposited in tissues okay it variety is called bad cholesterol in common parlance okay insulin and uh, triiodothrin increases the binding of ldl to liver cells okay this explains hypercholesterolemia seen in diabetes and hypothyroidism because insulin will push ldl to get back to the liver okay and thyroid hormone also in case of hypothyroidism in case of insulin deficiency in case of diabetes what happen the person with uh, diabetes can be hypercholesterolemia condition because this is the logic behind okay defect in ldl receptor synthesis called familial hypercholesterolemia so as there is no receptors over there because this clathrin coated pits are supposed to be that means a apo b100 receptors uh, and clathrin coated receptors are not available how ldl will go inside right so it leads uh, high content of ldl in circulation leads a condition called familial hypercholesterolemia so lipoprotein a is a very strongly associated with uh, myocardial infarction and sometimes called little rascal because it is associating and causing myocardial infarction along with the ldl uh, lipoprotein a when present is attached to apo b100 by disulfide bond in 40% of population there is no detectable level of lipoprotein a in serum okay in 20% of population lpa concentration blood is more than 30 mg per dl and the persons are susceptible for heart attack at younger age okay and lipoprotein a is associated with heart attacks at the age of 30 or 40 years okay but there is no significant amount of lipoprotein a levels in the circulation but when there is a ldl okay because the protein which is on the top of the ldl is apo b100 so this lipoprotein will go lipoprotein a will go and bind to apo b100 with disulfide linkage it starts sedimenting the ldl okay so this ldl taken by the macrophages they form white plaques atherotic plaques causing blockage in the arteries especially in the heart
So Indians have higher level of lipoprotein A levels than Western population. LPA has significant uh, homology with uh, plasminogen. So interferes with plasminogen activation and impedes fibrinolysis. This leads to unopposed intravascular thrombosis and possible myocardial infarction. So that is the main disadvantage of lipoprotein A. So remember here EPOA and lipoprotein A are different. EPOA is a constituent of HDL. It is good and this is written in capital letters. EPOA always written in capital letters. Lipoprotein A, uh, the A will be written in small letters. So it is an anti-atherogenic. Okay, EPOA is anti-atherogenic. Lipoprotein A is a constituent of LDL. This A is written in small letters. It is highly atherogenic. Okay, EPOA is anti-atherogenic. Lipo A is highly atherogenic. So forward and uh, reversal of cholesterol. Okay, and I mean like reverse transport of cholesterol. How we can make out here? Okay, so from liver, VLDL is going and making of LDL, and here. So deposits of black cholesterol. So again from the heart, HDL picks up the cholesterol, it dumping into the liver. So forward and reverse transport of. So forwarding of cholesterol by VLDL and LDL, and same time reversal of cholesterol uh, transport uh, from heart and extra hepatic tissues, hepatic tissues by HDL. So that's why LDL is considered as bad cholesterol and HDL is considered as a good cholesterol. So that's all about uh, lipoprotein metabolism and their uh, clinical significance. Thanks for watching. Thank you.